Hello everyone. So, after your test on uh, Geoffrey Chaucer's Canterbury Tales, I think we have concluded the Middle Ages and we are going to start uh, something that we are going to develop next year, but I'm going to give you a short introduction. That is to say, the Renaissance. Um, the English Renaissance started much later than the Italian one. Remember that the Middle Ages finished conventionally okay, in 1485. This means that the, the English Renaissance started at the end of the 15th century. Um, of course, the word Renaissance means something very different from the word Middle Ages, although you will see there is a kind of continuity between them. Uh, the discovery of what we call the new learning, man as centre of the universe, the discovery of uh, the solar system, okay, and the fact that a person built his or her life not in perspective of another life after death, but enjoying life on earth, okay, which makes it slightly different. Of course, we shall see the details concerning the new learning, okay, uh, new discoveries, new scientific discoveries, also new, let's say, literary discoveries of ancient texts, especially of uh, uh, the classical Greek period, for example, okay, and the fact that people insisted on their present life more than a spiritual life after death, which was uh, more or less uh, what uh, was the mentality of the Middle Ages, although Chaucer showed us something a bit different because the prioress was not really very interested in a life after death. She was interested in her aspect, uh, in, in uh, even enjoying her, her pilgrimage, okay, much more than probably uh, a life in perspective after death and a material life much more than a spiritual life, okay? So, it, so it already started to be visible then, okay? So I'm going to give you a historical introduction of the Renaissance that is uh, of the um, 16th century where we see Henry VII, the end of the Wars of the Roses, the, of course, the reign of Henry VIII, very important because there is the religious schism, okay, the fact that uh, um, Britain didn't belong to the Roman Catholic religion anymore, okay, uh, and of course, uh, after Henry VIII and after a few, let's say, centuries, a few decades of uncertainty, uh, we had the reign of Queen Elizabeth I. Queen Elizabeth I, uh, that was a very important reign of economic prosperity, of great uh, commercial and great political power of uh, England. Okay, right. Uh, um, what we shall see in literature, let's say quite briefly, uh, are Shakespeare's poems, uh, Shakespeare as a poet. Then next year we shall see the Elizabethan theatre, um, the uh, Elizabethan playhouse uh, and Shakespeare naturally as a dramatist. Okay, take your books, page 80. The Renaissance and I'm just going to, I'm just going to explain um, the timeline. 1485 Henry VII marries Elizabeth of York and ends the Wars of the Roses. 1509, 
Henry VIII becomes King of England and marries Catherine of Aragon. 1509-14, Erasmus of Rotterdam teaches at Cambridge University. Uh, abbiate in mente il progetto Erasmus, appunto. 1516, Sir Thomas More's Utopia is published. Sir Thomas More was a philosopher who remained a Catholic and was executed as such. Rimase cattolico e fu appunto condannato a morte. 1517, Martin Luther's 95 Theses begin the Reformation. Quindi parliamo della riforma religiosa, della riforma uh, protestante. 1533, Henry VIII's divorce from Catherine of Aragon and marriage to Anne Boleyn. Appunto il suo voler sposare Anne Boleyn fa sì che chiese appunto al Papa Uh, l'annullamento del suo matrimonio da Caterina di Aragona, il Papa rifiutò e quindi lui si dichiarò indipendente dalla Chiesa Cattolica Romana e si dichiarò capo della Chiesa Protestante d'Inghilterra. 1534, Act of Supremacy, appunto l'atto dello scisma, Henry VIII, Head of the Church of England, capo della Chiesa d'Inghilterra. 1543, Copernicus's On the Revolution of the Celestial Spheres is published, quindi la rivoluzione copernicana, in cui praticamente la Terra non è più al centro dell'universo. 1549, Act of Uniformity enforces use of the Book of Common Prayer, l'uso di un libro delle preghiere. Okay? and the importance of the Bible, l'importanza della lettura della Bibbia. 1558, Elizabeth I, daughter of Henry VIII and Anne Boleyn, becomes queen. So her reign was very long because it ended in 1603. 1568, Mary, Queen of Scots, Maria Stuarda, flees Protestant Scotland, scappa dalla Scozia protestante, leaving behind her one-year-old son, James, quindi lascia il figlio di un anno, James, che poi diventerà re e succederà a Elisabetta I nel 1603. 1584, Queen Elizabeth gives Sir Walter Raleigh permission to set up the American colony of Virginia, vi ricordo è anche il secolo delle grandi scoperte, dei grandi viaggi in mare in Inghilterra. 1588, Spanish Armada is defeated. The Spanish Armada era la flotta spagnola costituita da delle navi molto grosse e viene per la prima volta sconfitta dalla flotta inglese che naturalmente era costituita da meno navi ma da navi più piccole e certamente più leggere e veloci, più la nebbia e anche il fatto che loro combattessero in casa. 1603, James VI of Scotland becomes James I of England. Ok, James I of England, uh, who reigned until 1625. Right, um, Under James I's reign, Shakespeare lived, in fact, until 1616. 1605, the gunpowder plot, that is to say, the discovery of a plot uh, headed by Guy Fawkes to destroy the Houses of Parliament. La festa si festeggia il 5 novembre, Guy Fawkes Night. Okay? And... 1611, publication of the King James Bible, quindi la pubblicazione della Bibbia di James I, and 1620, Pilgrim Fathers Land in America, quindi i padri pellegrini arrivano in America e si stabiliscono appunto nel Massachusetts. Page 81, ok, you have a picture of the Elizabethan Playhouse that has recently been reconstructed, that is the Globe Theatre, 
that you can visit in London. I visited it, I saw also a play and it's very interesting but you can also go to Villa Borghese and there is an example of uh, a, a theatre that is a bit smaller than uh, the Globe Theatre but it is also very interesting to see a performance there. Page 81 uh, an overall view, humanist thought triumphed over medieval scholasticism, quindi il pensiero umanistico che trionfa sul pensiero scolastico medievale. The physical extent of the known world was expanded by voyages of discovery, quindi eh, la conoscenza del mondo viene appunto ampliata dalle grandi scoperte. The breaking down of the Christian Church into Protestant and Catholic, quindi la separazione della Chiesa d'Inghilterra in Chiesa protestante e cattolica, radically changed personal and public life. B. The population and the price of food increased in 16th century England. La popolazione aumentò, ma anche il prezzo del mangiare. The merchant fleet and navy expanded trade, quindi la flotta mercantile. Uh, ampliò il commercio across the Atlantic to the Spanish dominions ai possedimenti spagnoli. The slave trade, il commercio degli schiavi, between Africa and America and the colonization of North America began, quindi iniziò la colonizzazione del Nord America. C. During the reign of Elizabeth I, there was a period of flourishing for the arts, quindi un periodo di fioritura delle arti, and in particular of the theatre, del teatro in particolare, which became a popular form of entertainment, divenne una forma popolare di intrattenimento for all levels of society, per tutte le classi sociali. Shakespeare's plays were staged mostly in London's theatres, principalmente le sue opere venivano rappresentate a Londra, while his poems were meant for a private public, i suoi poesie, come vedremo, erano per un pubblico privato. D. Religion dominated Puritan society in the first half of the 17th century and everyone reflected upon the details of their faith, ognuno rifletteva su i dettagli della fede and how they should express their beliefs e come dovevano esprimere la loro fede. A common debate in this period was the conflict between spirituality and worldliness. Quindi il dibattito di questo periodo era il conflitto tra la spiritualità e la vita terrena. Ok? And E, London was fast becoming Europe's largest city, stava diventando Londra, la più grande città d'Europa. England became the center of maritime trade, l'Inghilterra divenne il centro del commercio marittimo. As inflation eroded the wealth of the landed aristocracy, dato che l'inflazione corrodeva la ricchezza dell'aristocrazia terriera, and trade increased e il commercio aumentava, the affluence of the commercial classes, quindi il benessere delle classi, dei mercanti, delle classi uh, commerciali. Ok, right. Um, the other elements belong to the 17th century, like the civil war, and of course uh, we shall deal with them next year. Right, next time we shall talk about Shakespeare's poems. Ok, goodbye.